Today's video is frying up some traditional foods here in Newfoundland, and I wanna do some codfish. So we're gonna fry up some cod fillets along with some bridgets, which we'll tell you what that is later in the video. Some cod tongues, olive cheeks, maybe even a cod zit or two. Look at that beautiful fire. This is a wood stove. There is no electricity used and there is no propane. It is all wood heat. Absolutely the best for frying up some beautiful fish. And we prefer to use iron pots and pans. And we have an iron frying pan. To get that heat into the frying pan and get it into the fish, nothing tastes better than consistent heat. Look at that beautiful color on the codfish, cod tongues, the bridgets, and we also have alibut cheeks. Can't ask for a better high protein meal than this one. We prefer to use avocado oil. It's healthier, but also it's very high temperature. You, you can put that into the iron frying pan, don't have to worry about it smoking, and that's very important when we're frying up some fish. We don't want our oil to burn. Totally change the look and taste of the beautiful fish. There's lots of splatter when it comes to frying up fish on this beautiful stove, so you're constantly wiping down the stove. Kind of don't want it to set in too much, or it requires a little bit more work afterwards, cleaning. So we're always wiping down the stove because it's always splattering, but that's okay because this is going to be an incredible meal. How do we prepare our codfish and our tongues, cheeks, and our bridges? Well, some people will go out and purchase some fish coating or fish batter, but we prefer to keep it simple. We're kind of like that because we want to enjoy the full flavor of the fish, the tongues, the bridges, and the cheeks. So we just add a little bit of flour to a Ziploc baggie. We add some salt and pepper to the flour, and then we'll mix in our fish. Make sure all your fish is fully coated. Then we'll eat up our frying pan with the avocado oil, and we'll just add the fish. One of the best things about using the flour on the fish, it's an indicator of when the fish is ready to be taken off the heat. And once it starts turning a light brown, then we will remove it from the frying pan and it's ready to go. Very simple and very easy. And you see the V shape? That's Bridget's. Why is it called Bridget's? Well, I'll explain later, but that is Bridget's. And the cod tongues, it is absolutely beautiful and delicious. So just a little bit of back history about our codfish here in Newfoundland and understand a little bit about our fishing today. Back in the late 1400s is when John Cabot first came to Newfoundland and in the 1500s the Portuguese along with French and England came to Newfoundland for fishing. Now shortly after that England of course went to war with Spain and also had a battle with the Portuguese about fishing rights in Newfoundland and they prevented the Portuguese from coming back to Newfoundland by seizing a lot of their ships and imprisoning a lot of their captains. So it prevented a lot of Portuguese from coming back to Newfoundland. And shortly after that, of course, England went to war with the French over Newfoundland rights, lands, and also the waters. So what happened there was in the second battle that they had, because England won the first battle, second battle, France thought they were gonna lose again so they end up signing a treaty. That treaty included two islands off the south coast of Newfoundland, which gave them fishing rights around those two small islands. So it's St. Pierre and Miquelon is the two French islands off the south coast of Newfoundland, and they spend a lot of time here in Newfoundland, and likewise, Newfoundlanders also go to St. Pierre and Miquelon. Back in the early days of discovery, they said you were able to scoop the cod out of the water using baskets. That's how plentiful it was. They said even it was hard to roll ashore because the cod was so plentiful in the waters. That's how much cod we had around the highland back in the first days of discovery, back in the 15 and 16 and 1700s. Back in the early 1900s, as ships gotten bigger and they invented the trawlers. The trawlers would capture a lot more fish at one, at one time. And back in the 60s and 70s, of course, the ships even got bigger. But back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, is when the start of the collapse of our cod fishery. And what happened there was the massive trawlers, and especially the factory trawlers. All these trawlers just scraped and basically destroyed our spawning grounds, destroyed uh, a lot of our cod species. 
in 92 was the moratorium on the cod fishery in Newfoundland Labrador. They were no longer allowed to fish for commercial use. And at that time, we weren't even allowed to fish for our own personal use. So it was only in the last few years that they allowed the fishery to come back, probably in the last 20 years. And with that, we were allowed to fish for our own personal use. So many weekends in the summer and two weeks in the fall, which we're still limited to the amount of fish that we can catch. It's only five per person per day when the fishery is open on those specific days. So it's really changed the fishery. The fishery was unlimited in this in this province if it was managed properly and instead other countries were still coming in and along with our own country destroying the fish fish stocks and it's still not back to where it was it's very difficult when you almost totally eliminate a species rather they move on to other places to try and survive but it's very hard especially when you're talking about the ocean to bring a species back to recovery and uh, I don't think you'll ever see it the way it was in this province. So the Canadian government only has the fishing rights 200 miles outside of the province. So 200 miles out on the, what they call the Grand Banks and that's usually the spawning grounds for a lot of the cod. Outside of that you have international uh, countries coming in and still using trawlers to fish the cod. So even though that's the spawning grounds it's still being destroyed and it's hard to bring back a species if overfishing is still occurring uh, outside of our jurisdiction and we have no control over that it has to do with international laws international countries international fishing unless you're a newfoundlander a lot of people don't like cod tongues it's not the taste it's the texture it's very jelly like kind of a little bit spongy but it tastes incredible and we newfoundlanders love cod tongues but it is spongy very very tasty it's truly amazing I do have somewhat of a texture like scallops somewhat doesn't taste like scallop at all get inside of it it's like a gelatin It is truly delicious. So another delicacy off a of cod is the bridges. We love bridges. It's basically the roll, the roll of cod. As you can see, it's like a sack. You see it right there. You see like a film over it. It is delicious. A lot of people don't like it, but it is delicious. And it's all connected. It's like a pair of treasures. So we're going to open this up so you can get some idea what it's like inside. As you can see, it's not like the white meat of cod. It's not like the tongues, not like the cheeks. It is totally different. It is the goodness of cod. It's the roll. It has a totally different taste, totally different texture. It's not fishy. A lot of people might not like it, not because of the taste, but because of what it is. And this is delicious albut cheeks. As you can see, you kind of pull it away, same as chicken. Don't taste like chicken to me. It's a very mild scallop taste. It is beautiful and it's very big chunks of meat. So we usually cut it into smaller pieces. So we kind of get more out of it and it's very easy to cook. I find it better than the alibut itself. Alibut, you gotta very, be very careful not to overcook, but these beautiful cheeks, put some flour on it and when the flour starts turning a light brown, they're ready to go. Very beautiful. Yeah, I don't bother much with this. This is part of the codzid. Codzid is cut up and fried up. There's lots of fish inside. But again, I don't really bother with it because you kind of got to pick at it, find the meat. I kind of leave the codids for dad. But everything else is absolutely delicious. Wondering why there's an egg on the table. We actually got some chickens 
and that's going to be an upcoming video in the next few weeks so watch out for that one it's going to be very entertaining and it's about our new chickens if you enjoyed this video please check out my squid video right over here it is an absolutely wonderful video talking about squid and frying it up it is absolutely delicious a little incident happened to my father in that video so i think you'll enjoy it and leave some comments and we'll see you in our next video